All right, I'm sure you've all seen them. Universal Audio dropped three plugins based off of three of their more popular uh, amp sim pedals, and we're gonna talk about it. But we're gonna have a little bit of fun first. One day last week, I was kind of scrolling through YouTube, and I find this video from uh, Fluff, Ryan Bruce, and it is for this new plugin for the Universal Audio Ruby, which is the pedal that they created that's like a, a Vox AC30 uh, amp sim. Now, of all the things Fluff could have been demoing, I was a little surprised to see him doing an AC30, and that's really what made me check it out. So we go through the video, and I thought it sounded pretty good. You know, like, I was pretty impressed, and I liked a lot of the tones that he was getting out of it, and he gets to the end of it, and he says something along the lines of, you know, like, the pretty good price for these. You know, not a bad price. Pretty, you know, something along those lines. So I instantly, I got psyched. Uh, you know, in my head, I'm thinking probably somewhere between 30 and $50. Um, and for what I was hearing, even though 50 seemed a little steep, I was like, this sounds really good. I could see myself paying 50 bucks for this. So I clicked on the link that he had in his description. It was a weird thing. I don't know if he posted his video early. His was the only one available at the time. And the link took you to the UA plugin page, but the Dream, Ruby, and Lion 68 were nowhere to be seen. So I don't know if he posted his a day early and it prompted them to move up the schedule or if maybe he was just supposed to post before everyone else. But the very next day, all of the other guitar YouTubers drop their videos. The links are live. I go to check it out. A hundred and fifty. Actually, let me. Three hundred dollars a piece. And they're like on a special introductory price for a hundred and fifty bucks. Now, for reference, the Ruby uh, Dream, uh, 65 Dream, Dream 65, something like that, which is based off of a, a 65 Fender Deluxe Reverb, uh, and the Lion 68, which is a uh, Marshall Plexi Super Lead kind of thing. Uh, the pedal platform of these, brand new, is like 400 bucks. So UA, in today's economy, was like, you know what we should do? We should turn these into plugins and then charge almost the exact same amount of money for way less functionality. Before I go any further, I do want to say, I understand the purpose of having these as a plugin. I totally see the usefulness and the functionality in owning these as a plugin. And I'm going to be real honest with you, I like them. I think they sound pretty good. While the, the Ruby, which is the AC30, and the Dream, which is the Deluxe Reverb, make me want to put pedals in front of them just like I would the real amp. The Lion, which I used for all of the tracks in that intro, is just fun to play with. I just had fun playing it, and I think maybe you could even see it a little on my face, even though I was playing to what I had previously recorded. You know, like, it was just... It was fun to sit down and do that. I had a lot of fun playing this, and I don't like plexis. So I understand the purpose of a plug-in like this. I totally get it. But $300? If you want all three of them, you're going to have to spend almost $1,000. And let me just say, uh, these plugins are bare bones. They literally do not offer anything, at least that I noticed, that the pedal version doesn't offer. It's maybe the only guitar plugin I've ever seen that doesn't have a tuner built into it. Uh, you can uh, use like a, a third party IR, but you can't load it into the plugin itself. You just have to load up an IR loader, which isn't the biggest deal really, but for $300, now I gotta add a plugin to what I'm already using? That's a little wild to me. Like with the pedals, you have a choice of, I think, six. Uh, stock 
cab mic combinations you cannot mix those and match them in any way you want it just it is what it is which again is fine but not for three hundred dollars now i said i had fun playing these and i really did I love the way the Ruby sounds. I love the way the Dream sounds. And I really enjoyed the Lion. Um, and to me, these aren't... When I look at plugins, I don't go, okay, does this sound exactly like the real thing? I go, do I enjoy playing this? Do I enjoy this sound? Because if the answer is yes, then to me, it's a good plugin. And yes, I enjoyed these sounds. I think these sound good, but, you know... The Plexi does not sound better than the Soft Tube Marshall Amp Room, which is made in tandem with Marshall themselves. And while I think the plugins sound really good on their own, and I, I mentioned the Ruby and the 65 make me want to put pedals in front of them, I was able to get some decent tones, but I still, like, there's a lot of finickiness when you're running analog pedals, especially like distortion and fuzz, into a digital plugin that I don't think you would have if you had the pedal version version of these. And I just keep coming back to it's $300 for a plug-in based on a $400 pedal based on a really legendary series of amps. I just I could almost I I still I would still have a hard time if it was $300 for all three of them like the set. I would still have a hard time with that cuz I think that's a bit much considering the very limited functionality you have you basically only have the sound that it is um but three hundred dollars a piece that is so hard to stomach and again they're on sale right now for 150 if you're watching this the weekend they come out but i don't know how long that sale is going to last 10 days 90 days you know we don't know it's a 300 hundred dollar plug-in let me tell you maybe the positive benefit for universal audio that maybe they saw coming maybe they didn't i don't know but what this plugin really made me want is the actual lion pedal like i don't like plexis i've never liked a plexi i've always oh they're so great they're so versatile you can sound like acdc and led zeppelin and Jimi hendrix and i'm like yeah but can you sound like anyone from this century you know like it's just never been my thing. But a lot of that is the way it's portrayed and the way it's demonstrated. And as I started playing with this plugin, I was like, oh man, here's where MXPX is in this. Here's where, you know, uh, Bad Religion is. Here's where Dag Nasty is. So, so it, it really made me think of two of my earliest guitar influences, Tom from MXPX and Brian Baker from uh, uh, Bad Religion and, and Dag Nasty and uh, Black Flag, I think, for a little while, and just a lot of other bands where they kind of iconically used uh, plexis. Now, they've both used a bunch of stuff, and I know Tom, for the longest time, was using, like, Mesa, Roadster, Road King, something like that. I forget exactly what it was. That's not really the point. The point is, I found these sounds that I grew up hearing that I didn't realize was in that plexi package. So that excited me. And what it made me, it, it didn't make me want to spend $300 on this plugin. It made me want the Lion pedal. And in fact, I fully intend to get one of the Lion pedals. And Here's why. Here's why I think, like, I encourage each and every one of you to get the 14-day free trial of these plugins and figure out if you like the sound, and then do not buy them. Go buy the pedal version of that. And here's why. We're going to look at some prices that I pulled off of Reverb this morning, right before I got ready to start shooting this. Here we've got a handful of options to get the physical pedal. The Lion 68 physical pedal for $300 or less. I think the physical pedal gives you a lot of options and a lot of functionality that the plugin doesn't. And I think, other than the fact that it's not a plugin, I don't think you miss anything that the plugin gives you that this doesn't give you. So, bang for buck if this is what you want you know the pedal is the way to go and again that's not saying that these plugins are bad they're not 
bad, guys. They're not bad. Maybe you don't like them. Maybe you don't like the way they sound. That's, you know, like, that's what, for me, I enjoyed them. I liked the way they sounded. They're not bad. They are absolutely unpalatable for $300. Because here's the thing. <clears throat> if you buy any of these pedals, let's say all in, shipping, tax, everything, you pay $300 for one, okay? If in three months you decide, you know what, I'm not really into this anymore. Guess what? You can turn around and you can sell that. And you may not get every dime back, but you're going to get a good, I don't know, 75, 80% of it back, just depending on how long you wait and how well you've taken care of it. And, you know, like, did you, like, bang on it a bunch and, and break stuff on it? You know, like, all of those things matter, but ultimately you're going to get so much back on your investment. On the other hand... If 90 days from now, three months from now, two weeks after you've purchased these, it doesn't really matter when. If you purchase them on Monday and on Tuesday, you're like, man, you know what? I don't really like this. That's too bad. That $300 is gone. Maybe they have some sort of return policy. I don't know. But ultimately, that $300 is gone. If you decide down the line you don't like it or... If down the line your needs change and it no longer really meets your needs, then that's too bad. You don't get to recoup any of that cost. You can't turn around and sell your plug-in to somebody else. And to me, that is why it's the reason why I think it's ridiculous that the digital version of a movie costs the exact same amount as it would cost for me to walk into Best Buy and buy that movie. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I know it sounds like I'm griping a lot. And the truth is, I spent the last few days playing these and trying to figure out how I wanted to talk about them. I could do sound tests. I could go over the specs and the features. But all of that is out there. What I have not seen yet, and I'm not saying nobody's done it, but what I haven't seen yet is people saying like, okay, but maybe, maybe this doesn't make as much sense for the money as it could or should. Again, 50 bucks a piece for these, that's that's a really good price. Even like if you look at the soft tube stuff, individual models are usually about $100 a piece, um, although you do get quite a bit of functionality within that that you don't get with these. Um, and then you can get like the entire amp room, like Marshall amp room suite regular price, not even on sale, is like 150 or 170 something like that. And to me, you know, like... To me, they sound better, but you're also getting way more functionality. And as somebody who plays pedals more than I play guitar, honestly, they take pedals way better. So I just like $300, even a $150 introduction rate is so much money for these. If that's worth it to you, I'm not saying that you're dumb or anything like that. I see where like for some people this is going to be worth it. But just as a as an overall like investment with your money, it, it is a it is a poor investment. You get nothing back on it if you decide you want to change your mind and you don't like it. It's a lot of money for very limited functionality. And the sound, to me, is not so much better than everything else there, everything else out there that it justifies the exorbitant amount of money. I am so sorry for griping about this. I want to make sure, like, I'm not dissing Universal necessarily. Like, I, I fully, I have, I'm watching a bunch of lions on Reverb. I'm going to get one. I want one of these really bad, and I want one because of this plugin. I never would have given it a chance. Like I said, Plexi's not my thing, never has been. I played one in real life. I was like, what is this? Because I couldn't get it turned up loud enough to make it do anything really. <sighs> the way people demonstrate Plexi tones, it's just not my thing and it made me not like it. And then I played this and I was like, yo, this is actually pretty good. I like this, but not in this format because it doesn't make any sense. Now, if this was 30 bucks, I would buy it in a heartbeat. It's totally worth $30. And I think, you know, like even maybe even 50 bucks again, I've said it before, but 50 bucks, I would probably even consider it. But $300 is mind 
mind-blowing to me when you can pay less than $300 and get the pedal that has a lot of functionality. So when I first started doing videos, I was actually recording into my iPad. Uh, I would run my uh, interface into my iPad, uh, and then I would record in Logic on my iPad. And instead of using amp sims in Logic, I was using different like pedal amp sims. So I was using like the TC Electronic Ampworks DC30 for a little while, which is like this AC30 style um, uh, pedal amp sim, and you can find videos on that, some of my early videos. And then I used the, um, I think the Two Notes Genome is what it was called. I used that for a few months and it was the same kind of deal. I would like to go back to that kind of setup. So for me, I, like I'm really psyched about getting one of these pedals now. But $300 for the plug-in. I, I'm going to stop saying it. Okay, hey, listen. I know this has been a little gripey. Uh, I'm sure somebody's going to be, oh, this guy hates everything. The comment that I've gotten out of all of my videos, the comment that I've gotten that sticks with me the most, that I just I think about every time I get ready to make a video, is when I did the Tone X1, somebody commented, this guy just hates everything. I feel like I'm a pretty positive guy, but I'm also honest. Like, I'm going to give you guys my honest opinions. I, none of this is sent to me for free. You know, I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Let me tell you, I'm going to give you my 100% fully biased opinion because an unbiased, there's no such thing as an unbiased review. An unbiased review is just reading the spec sheets and showing you what it sounds like. I'm here to give my biased opinion based on what it is how it works for me as a guitar player who likes to play punk rock and hardcore and maybe get a little shoegazy every once in a while. So like I'm gonna be I'm I'm giving you my summation of these plugins with an extreme amount of bias and I understand that. But bias is important because we all approach guitar from a certain bias. None of us are unbiased guitar players. We're biased by the things that influenced us and the things that are comfortable to us and the sounds that we like. And I know I'm rambling and I'm really sorry, but I just, I don't hate these plugins. I'm not trying to tear them down. I'm not trying to call you dumb if you spent the money or if you're gonna spend the money in the future. It's just, it doesn't seem like a good investment. And sometimes, sometimes that's, I, sometimes I can't see anything but that. I can't, see, yes, they sound good. Yes, I had fun playing it. It's $300, guys. $300, okay? I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys have a great week. I do encourage you to try these because I don't think they're bad. I really liked them. I had a lot of fun with them, and it's going to it. It. it I'm gonna buy Universal Audio products because of it. So I want to make that clear. It's just not gonna be these unless they want to send me a free code. It's just not gonna be these unless Universal Audio wants to send me a free code. All right, everybody, have a great week. Later. Yeah.